Hey everybody, thanks for joining us this morning for another one of our 21 days. Today you've got a special treat. You get to see our own Jesse Christian doing a little bit of a Bible lesson for all of us adults. Now, if you haven't seen any of the Kidopolis videos that she's been putting together, you really should go back and watch at least a few of them because they've been really superb in the way that she's been breaking down the message of God's Word for kids. Uh, I'm especially a big fan of this last week with a flannel graph. But anyway, Jesse's going to bring a little bit of a Bible lesson to all of us this morning, and so I hope you're encouraged by this. Hi everybody, um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jessie. Your kids might know me as Miss Jessie. Um, I volunteer back in Kidopolis. I am currently, well, I guess I'm not currently the teacher in the city. I've been just doing uh, Kidopolis videos uh, aimed for all of the kiddos at church. So if they haven't been watching it, please have them watch it. I love hearing how they're liking those videos. Um, today though, it's a little weird for me because I'm not talking to kiddos. Uh, Maybe I am, if any of my kiddos are watching. Hi guys, I miss you. Um, talking to adults. So, excuse me if any of this seems like it should be in a kid's lesson. It's just what I'm used to at this point. Um, <clears throat> for a 21 days of prayer thing, um, I want to talk about something that I think is really important and that I'm very passionate about when it comes to prayer. Um, I do wanna point out that I have not seen all of the 21 days of prayer video and haven't been keeping up because terrible um, we're in a pandemic i think everybody gets a little bit of an excuse um but i plan on binging them like a really good netflix series so if this has been talked about though i apologize um maybe if i upload this and jeff or megan is like jess they've already talked about it then i'll have to think of something new but if you see my face apparently it's okay um, so I don't know about you, but a lot of times I will get, um, hmm, I don't know the word, like an urge or a, uh, prompting from the Holy Spirit, probably from the Holy Spirit to pray for somebody. Um, and not only that, but I also feel very prompted by the Holy Spirit and maybe it's just me that's what I want to talk about to let that person know that I am praying for them I'll get it laid on my heart that like somebody's name will pop into my head a situation um one time I was like thinking about somebody who I thought that maybe they were pregnant I knew that they were trying or stuff um something and I told them hey I'm praying for you I was thinking about God blessing you with a baby soon, and um, I hope that's all going well. And they had actually just experienced a miscarriage. So my text message was, I think, a little bit painful for them, but at the same time, they told me that they were very thankful um, for it because not only is somebody like thinking about them and praying for them, but I think it lets them know that God is thinking about them. And that's the thing I want to say too. Whenever you let somebody know that you're praying for them, always give give the credit to God because he is the one who is letting you know that, that person needs prayer. And it's awesome. It's so awesome of you to pray for them and let them know, yes, you're doing the work, but God is the one who deserves credit. So make sure you do that. So um, kind of just spoiled my whole message, but basically I broke it down into like, you, there's four things that you can do when you get this prompting or this urge or this um, inclination to pray for somebody. And I'm gonna give you another spoiler and say that you wanna be on step four, okay? It's okay if you're not on step four, but you wanna be on step four. Step one is you do absolutely nothing. It goes in your head and you're like, that's, that's something to think about and you move on. Don't do that. Step two is that you pray. Great, absolutely, that's awesome. Step three is you're gonna pray and you're gonna think about talking to them. You're gonna give thanks to God for the opportunity to pray to that person maybe, but it's gonna stay between you and God. That's okay. But step four is really where you wanna be. Step four, you're gonna pray for that person and you're gonna go and tell that person, God told me I want to pray. I should pray for you. God laid this on my heart. Hey, I was just, and you know what? If it's something who's made me uncomfortable, with prayer, maybe they're not a Christian, maybe they're not a believer, maybe 
you're not quite sure exactly how they'll react to something like that, just send them a message and let them know that they're thinking about you. God's going to take care of the details if, um, if there's a little bit, little bit of discomfort there. But either way, you definitely need to let that person know. Um, next, what I want to talk about is in Ephesians 6.18. I looked up some um, passages in the Handy Dandy Bible to talk about this. So Ephesians 6.18 and I already sound like it's, I have an NIV Bible. I don't know what you have at home. Um, this is NIV and this was, I think, published in 2004. So it might be, nope, it's even, this one was 2001, so it's quite old. Um, so the words might be different, but as I tell my kiddos, it's okay. It's okay if it's a little different, let's just talk about it. Um, what did I say? Ephesians 6.18. Okay. We are... And in and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the saints. So the word that there that I want to like focus on is alert. You need to always be alert. You don't don't get stuck in step one where you do nothing. God gives you the name of somebody to pray for, something to pray about. Be alert about it and do it and pray for those people. Um, so that was Ephesians 6, 18, be alert, make sure that you're praying for the people that God puts on your heart. Now, um, next is Romans 8, 26 and no, one second, it's always fun in this house. Um, pandemic times, kiddos are always around and usually wanting a snack. Anyway, so what I was talking about was Romans 8, 26. Okay, so um, I think this is an amazing passage um, and it can be relevant to what we're talking about. Um, obviously, it's relevant for a lot of things. That's what the Bible is for. But uh, here, I'll read it to you and then we'll talk about it. Um, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our heart, God, knows the mind of the Spirit, because, you know, they're one, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. So he intercedes, this, my interpretation um, is that the Spirit intercede, intercedes for the saints in accordance to God's will. So for me, that means he intercedes um, for, for me to God, but I think also he's, the spirit is going to give the option of interceding for others in your life for them to you. And you might feel that the wordless intercedes for us with groans that words could not express. Sometimes it's not going to be what, you know, the spirit isn't going to be like, you need to pray for John because his knee hurts. It might not be like that. I mean, it might be. It might be. That's really cool if it is. Um, but it is probably going to be, hey, you need to think about your friend John. You need to pray about him. You need to talk to him. Okay? Um, it's going to be, it might be kind of wordless. And again, thinking back to the Ephesians passage, be alert, be ready. Be ready to intercede for somebody. Be ready to, to pray for them. Okay? <clears throat> So we have those, uh, Ephesians 6, 18, Romans 8, 26, and now I'm moving on to 1 Peter 3, 15. That's it? Okay. So, um, it says, but in your heart set apart Christ as Lord, always be prepared to give an answer for everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect. So um, this is about being able to proclaim your love of God, I think, and to um, proclaim that Christ is Lord. Um, but I think that also we go back to that alertness and that readiness, always be prepared to give an answer for everyone who asks to give you the reason for the hope that you have. And that goes back to what I said earlier, always bring it back to God because he is the one who is ultimately 
you know, calling the shots. He is the one who is the one laying that person's um, problems or joy, even joy on your heart to pray. Make sure you bring it back to God. Be alert. Pray for others. Let them know and let them know that it is God because it is so cool that you care about somebody, but it's so much cooler to know that God cares about you. I know that my friends care about me for the most for the most part. If you're my friend, maybe check on it, you know, me more. No, I'm kidding. But I know my friends care about me. I know my family cares about me. And I and I know that God cares about me too, but how cool is it to know when you're having a bad day and maybe you're feeling disconnected from God, how cool is it to get some kind of message from somebody that says, hey, God really cares about you. That is super cool. And also I skipped the part in first Peter. Um, if, you, if you're ever shy about giving this message or uh, letting them, somebody know that you're praying for them, uh, oof, it's kind of creepy. I don't want them to know that I'm thinking about them or maybe it's a touchy subject or maybe, you know, who knows what the reason is that maybe you're a little hesitant to send that text, to make that phone call, to go knock on that door with your mask on. Um, 1 Peter 3.13. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? Okay? But even if you even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. So let's hope you're not going to suffer for doing what is right. But you, if you're doing good, where is the harm in that? you will be blessed and you're going to bless somebody else. So I think <laughs> we have a lot of technical difficulties in this house. Anyways, I think that's all we have. Um, that's all I have. It's just me. And I hope that you got something out of that. Uh, I hope maybe if you uh, were praying for somebody today, go ahead and send them that text message and let them know. Don't be afraid to let them know. And, uh, just do it. Okay. Well, I love you guys. I miss you. I miss everybody. Not just the kids. I miss the grown-ups too. So have a great day. Thank you, Jesse, for all of your hard work at trying to make the Bible understandable, even for people like us. Hey, would you pray with me this morning? Lord God, we just ask that you would be at work in our hearts to help us understand the significance of your word for our lives that you'd help us to live it out, to, to, to let it affect us and make us into the kind of people you've created us to be. Lord, I thank you for giving us this time together in your presence. Would you encourage us and strengthen us for the rest of this day and let us be a blessing to everyone we meet. Thanks for giving us this opportunity, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great day today and be a blessing to someone around you.